Welcome, welcome to the emergency report of 9.0.5 regarding performance of the specs in PV content starting from raids. We are getting this emergency report out because we have some pretty interesting, drastic changes coming in right now. Of course, 9.0.5 has been out just a few days. There aren't any certainties yet, but we have enough numbers. We have enough logs numbering in the thousands after this first week, part of the first week, where we can start to draw some conclusions about the changes, about the shifts in power that are currently happening, because we have gotten some changes in 9.0.5, and we're going to go over them and see how they have impacted the specs so far. And to see how they have impacted specs so far, we have to look at the past. We have to look in the past and see how they were doing up to last week, up to right before we received all these changes. And this is how they were doing. So we can see that we have followed most of this, right? If you have followed this channel, you will know that we have followed, for example, the growth of Windwalker Monk, which became more and more popular as they were becoming more and more strong. We followed them in both Mythic Plus and Raid, where they were increasing in popularity and in performance. We have also followed the fall as you can see here, of Elemental Shaman. Elemental Shaman, which was um, battling for top three a few weeks ago. And then as guilds get more and more logs of Council of Blood, of Stone Legion Generals, of the Natrius, which have lots of AoE in the fights. Elemental had terrible AoE, not fast enough to do enough damage. They were getting basically their AoE DPS stolen by spec doing that type of DPS much faster. So Elemental was dropping in ranks because of it. We reported when Blizzard tried to buff the underperforming and underrepresented specs. If you remember, they buffed Assassination, they buffed Arcane and Frost Mage, they tried to buff Fury Warrior, and we saw that, for the most part, the changes weren't doing too much. The only one that got, you know, a decent rise compared to before was Frost Mage and also Fury Warrior. Those were the two which, at best, tried to get into the middle of the pack rather than being straight at the bottom. Those were just the, the more important change. The other specs didn't really change much. And from there, from there, we go to this. Okay, okay, so we have to go, we have to go by step by step. Number one, since eyes go to the top every time, Elemental Shaman is there again. Elemental Shaman went from slipping below middle of the pack to being top four, currently fighting with Fire Mage for top three, just like they were over a month ago. So what happened? We covered already, of course, the changes to Elemental Shaman. Elemental Shaman received a 10% nerf to Lava Burst, but they got a 70% buff to their damage, their base damage of Earthquake, on top of above a 35% damage buff to Chain Lightning. This essentially translates to this. If you're playing with the Echoes of Great Sundering Legendary, which was nerfed from 175% bonus damage to 120 because your Earthquake was buffed, the damage now of Elemental Shaman is much more consistent and much more solid when it comes to AoE. Even if you're playing like more Shamans are doing with Skybreakers, which is your Flame Shock spreading legendary, which still gives you a lot of Maelstrom generation for your Earthquakes, it can now give you very solid AoE damage. For example, the best way to show you this difference, that in the simplest way really, is to give you the difference between Stone Legion Generals. This is Stone Legion Generals right before the changes. You have to go pretty low to find Elemental. And then this is current 9.0.5 Stone Legion Generals. The one at the top is Elemental Shaman. There are other fights with some similar elements of AoE DPS that can be used. For example, in Erva, Elemental was literally near the bottom because Elemental had pretty solid single target. But whenever the adds on Inerva were spawning, Elemental had fuck all to do to those targets. At the best, you could hit them with a wet noodle chain lightning. Your earthquake wasn't really hitting for much, so your DPS overall was dropping down. You can see, for example, that Outlaw is one of the highest DPS on Inerva because of their cleave whenever the adds would spawn. In 9.0.5, you can see that Elemental Shaman has grown significantly compared to what it was before. They're still not at the top. They're still not one of the strongest because burst AoE is still not something they excel at. For example, as you can see, Outlaw is still at the top. He's still doing well. Another example, and we're going to stop here, is Council of Blood. Council of Blood also has some pretty um, numerous situations in which you can AoE. Elemental was below the bottom half in Council of Blood, and then after the patch, they are in the top half, in the top six. So this change for 9.0.5 has significantly improved the performances of Elemental, both when you play with the 
Echoes of Great Sundering for full-on Earthquake Chain Lightning damage, like we have seen. And also when you play with your more standard Skybreakers, Fairy Demise, Spreading of Flame Shock, the damage profile is similar. It's just much less uh, centered around Earthquake and Chain Lightning, but it is still very solid in AoE. And it has now given them some pretty nice damage profile. You can see this one is two similarly logging Elemental Shaman and Fire Mage. You can see that their peaks of Burst are similar now and even to something like an Holy Death Knight. When you don't count Army of the Dead, which is cheating, all the other bursts are similar. So that is our first main major change. Elemental Shaman doing much, much better compared to 9.0. Now we have another change. We have to bump up these together because they are very similar in what happened. And let's go back to the 9.0 overall damage, which looked like this. The next change is for Windwalker Monk and Marksmanship Hunter. So, as you can see, Windwalker Monk and Marksmanship Hunter are here. They are at the top, comfy at the top. Windwalker Monk had to rise to get there. You know, they had to put in the work to reach that point, whereas Marksmanship Hunter has pretty much been there since the start. Now, to be fair, Hunter had been even higher at the start. Hunter had been slowly, slowly, but surely dropping in performance over time because they were very heavily focused around AoE. They didn't have much power in pure single target they were basically carried heavily carried by their wild spirits so what happens when you nerf wild spirits what happens when you fix the interaction which makes you double proc wild spirits whenever you use aim shot with your serpent stalker's trickery what happens is that you go from there to here what happens is that you have to fight to survive with beast mastery hunter which is now tailing you very very closely in a similar situation where is Windwalker Monk now? Windwalker Monk is even lower down. After the nerf of your images of Storment and Fire no longer channeling your Fist of Fury even if you cancel it, which is what was fixed in 9.0.5, Windwalker's Monk performance has dropped by quite a bit. You can see pretty much why it is logical to pair these two specs together because they were pretty much one next to each other at the top and they both got fixed. They both got one of their interactions, which had worked for months, even though they weren't supposed to happen, and they both got fixed at the same time, and they are both finding themselves at the bottom again. Now, I don't want to take credit to point out that, for example, Beast Mastery Hunter scales better than Marksmanship and would have gotten better throughout the expansion, etc., etc. This is something uh, known and obvious. And also because right now it's not that Beast Mastery Hunter is good. It's not that Beast Mastery Hunter is finally close to Marksmanship because Beast Mastery has gotten better. No, Beast Mastery Hunter is close to Marksmanship because Marksmanship is now much, much worse. I have mentioned this multiple times, the fact that Marksmanship's single target is weak. It's, I mean, it's, it's below average and they were carried by AoE. Now that their strongest point, which is their AoE, has been nerfed, of course their viability drops by quite a bit. Whereas from Windwalker, there isn't much to say about it. Windwalker wasn't even touched in 9.0.5. It's not that certain abilities or covenant that Windwalkers were using were nerfed. They tried to buff one of their legendaries, but it doesn't matter because Windwalker right now already has a very, very powerful legendary, Invoker's Delight. So the only thing, literally the only thing that changed was the, the fix and has pretty much hurt both of them, both Marksmanship and Windwalker. We're going to see if this has impacted them in Mythic Plus as well later on. For now, in raids, they have definitely been um, hurting so far. Now, we have gotten a range DPS pack fall down a little bit in Hunter, replaced by another range DPS pack, Elemental. What about the melee DPS spec Windwalker? Do we have any of the other melee specs, you know, rising up, taking its place? Well, actually, yes. So, going back again to the previous patch performance, I urge you to check the yellow line. Not the Outlaw line, not even the subtlety one, but the Assassination one. That is where Assassination was, and this is where Assassination is now. So currently, just a few days and a few thousand logs in 9.0.5, Assassination is the best performing rogue spec, and it is one of the better performing melee DPS specs. So what the hell happened? Well, so we know that unlike Windwalker and Marksmanship, who simply got fixes along the way that nerfed them effectively, Assassination actually got a lot of buffs over time. Assassination has gotten tiny buffs ever since, you know, January. I think they, they were buffed in overall damage something like three times, and then 9.0.5 tried to buff them. In its legendaries, they also buffed their energy regeneration. They were nerfed 
let's just say temporarily nerfed in removing rank 2 of slice and dice which uh, reduced the extra energy regeneration you gain from slice and dice but they were given that energy regeneration in their kit now in their venomous wounds passive and effectively it gave them more energy region energy region is pretty helpful it's pretty precious to assassination if you are aware of the memes about assassination pooling time assassination waiting time they are a spec or they are pretty much the spec with the most waiting time together with feral druid basically having to just sit there roll your thumbs and wait for your energy to come back to be able to do something and then they were also buffed in one of the legendaries doomblade now yes doomblade is very boring it's very passive it's not very entertaining but what it wants to do is pretty powerful granted that you have the energy you have the combo points and you have the ability to even make use of it increasing the damage of your envenom based on the amount of bleeds and of course the legendary itself creates a bleed so you get the damage of the bleed plus the five percent extra damage that it gives envenom plus five percent for every other bleed you have this was buffed in 9.0.5 and it has given assassination very competitive i don't want to say best yet because it's too early it's too preliminary we don't have enough numbers to make this statement definitively but one of the better single target dps right now for example this was shriekwing right before the patch where assassination was below half and then this is 9.0.5 where assassination is second this is zymox zymox assassination was doing better already because of their single target being stronger but now this is 9.0.5 where assassination is at the top the amount of energy regeneration the amount of combo points and energy you can benefit from also makes it good when you can multi-dot when you can spread your dots in, in essentially the unique cleave situations you can be in as a dot spec like inerva when the ads are spawning you can see in 9.0 where assassination was literally in the bottom four and this is inerva in 9.0.5 where assassination is in the top six yet another pure single target fight like destroyer you can see assassination was even having to fight with outlaw for single target which is embarrassing i am I'm a boomer i am a man of tradition assassination should always absolutely trash outlaw or combat rogue when it comes to single target and this is destroyer in 9.0.5 this is how it should look when it comes to single target i mean the fact that outlaw is still ahead of subtlety in single target is embarrassing but at least we fixed assassination for now and just to drive the point home for example, Council of Blood. Tons of multi-targeting, tons of targets having to die quickly with all the grudging servants coming out, etc, etc. You can see Assassination was bad in Council of Blood and then in 9.0.5, they're still bad, you know. It is still not their type of damage profile, that type of fight. It's just very heavily focused on single target and even some, you know, multi-target, two to three extra targets like Altimor, for example, is another good uh, comparison. In 9.0, Assassination was below half, not doing that well and then in 9.0.5 they are in top four better performing many dps spec out of everyone so significant significant increase for assassination as well now we have to point out something i know this is a more holistic approach this is a more personal preference however this is how assassination looks okay so this is your standard assassination outlook profile when it comes to damage you can see that 17% being melee auto attacks, 10% being your deadly poison and an, an extra 5% being your other deadly poison proc. And then you have your dot from your legendary, which is almost 5%, your trinkets, your poison bombs, your uh, potions. All of this totals out to being around 40% of your damage. 40% of your damage, which is completely passive. Basically, you're not clicking anything. You're not pressing any button to do 40% of your damage. And to be even more, you know, pedantic, almost 25% of your damage is from dots that you apply once and they run in the background, you know, and then reapply them every 20 or so seconds. So, you know, it's assassination, okay? It's been buffed. It is way more apt at doing what they are supposed to do, which is single target damage. However, it's not that it's gotten more entertaining, it's not that it's gotten more interesting, it's just performing better. Which, I mean, if you were playing Assassination, I'm assuming you're already fine with how Assassination plays, so you should be plenty happy about your current situation now. I still wouldn't be, as, you know, I w I'm trying to make the spec play better, rather than just being stronger because you get buffed in numbers. But for now, I guess you're gonna take this. If you're a, if you're a rogue main and you always liked Assassination more than, like, Outlaw, I think you're gonna take this uh, current situation for now 
Do we have any other major changes outside of Windwalker, Marksmanship, Assassination and Elemental? Well, not really. Not many of the other changes to Legendaries and Covenants have modified the way specs are gonna play. I have a video out mentioning which of the specs have actually moved to a different Legendary, which of the specs have moved to a different Covenant, or are in the process of moving to a different Covenant. We do have to keep an eye out on a couple of things. Number one, because they are improving, but they're not improving that much that we need to, for now, go into detail about them. Retribution and Havoc. So Havoc now has Burning Wound as their new, you know, two go strong legendary and Retribution Paladin has access to a buffed final verdict, which is buffing their Templars verdict. So they have gotten higher in performance. For example, in Erva, you can see Rat and Havoc both together, hand in hand towards the bottom, and then in 9.0.5 they are still close to each other, but much improved in their performance. But let's just say for now it's not enough to draw any conclusions about them. It does seem like these two changes to legendaries are giving them more windows of opportunity to perform better. But it's not clear yet. It's not as clear as assassination. It's not as clear as elemental or as clear as in, in the negative side as Windwalker and Marksmanship. So this is how the situation currently is for DPS in raid encounters. Now, as far as representation goes, that is actually very, very early to call. Representation means literally, what, three raid knights at best? But if we want to point that out, then we can say that we can immediately see that <laughs> Windwalker has started to be less represented already and that Elemental has started getting more representation before there was a pretty big jump between Elemental and being able to reach the melee DPS pack of Retribution, Havoc, Fury and Windwalker. Now, Elemental is already very close to them and likely will continue to, to probably pass them over time. And then there is, of course, the other highlight, which is Assassination. Um, this is much easier for Assassination to rise in ranks because it's not that you have to actually respec completely. It's not that you have to be like a Warlock respec into Elemental or an Enhancement Shaman doing a full respec to Elemental. Assassination can just be Outlaws and Subtleties just respec into assassination so they can jumpstart their popularity in raids much much faster. I can also see eventually more and more beast masteries rising. I'm not surprised if by next week, if we are going over this again, like next Saturday or next Sunday, if marksmanship will be below both balanced druid and fire mage at the expense of beast mastery becoming more popular. That is also something that might happen. But you know, we're gonna stop here for representation because it's it's still too early to make definitive calls. Now, as for healers and tanks, which we have ignored up to this point, well, we have ignored them because it is much harder to gauge performance for healers and tanks, right? You can always gauge the performance of DPSers, even for example, doing farm weeks, you know, doing farm bosses. You still have to damage them. You still have to actually see who is performing better on single target on hunger and destroyer. Whether or not you're farming the boss or, or progressing on it is still damage you have to do but for a healer yeah for a healer is much more difficult to actually gauge um, how they are performing on farm the more interesting change for all healers because really the only major changes were that discipline priest got a 20 percent nerf to their spirit shell absorption and then restoration druids got a seven percent throughput buff to their wild growth and 12 percent buff to their rejuvenation so those were the only thing we could check to see if there has been any improvement it is also rather difficult to, to check the performance of healers. But for now, we, we haven't really seen anything. Yeah, we can look at the overall healing of 9.0.5 and we can see Restoration Druid being towards the top and even Mistweaver Monk, but this is not rare. You know, if you've ever looked at HPS, at pure HPS logs and things like that, it is not unlikely to see Restoration Druids doing very well. So it's not that we get much of any knowledge from this. When it comes to tanks, well, fuck me, tanks are even harder to gauge. Uh, most things you can do is just look at the representation and see if they are popular. But by this point, most guilds are already set in. We have reported and recorded the rise of Vengeance Demon Hunter over time. As we had less and less Havoc Demon Hunters in the raids, it became more and more convenient to use Vengeance Demon Hunters. It was also easy to use them because they were super popular in Mythic Plus. So any tank wanting to get good progress, or at the very least an easy time getting invited to begin with, they were playing Vengeance, and then they also went into raids, so eventually, it took a few weeks, but eventually they did pass Brewmaster Monk in terms of popularity in raids, and since then they have basically stayed there. 
that is pretty much the only thing we can check and compare. Another interesting thing is going to be what about Blood Death Knight being buffed in their legendary? What about Protection Warrior also being giga buffed? Well, as I said, it's still too early for tanks. It is much easier to find and discover all the tiniest differences for DPSers because damage logs can tell you much, much more than just if you were trying to analyze a healer or a tank. So for tanks, we'll have to wait a little bit more. So for healers. So this, for now, is what we can see in raids. We have gotten some major changes in positive for assassination and elemental, some pretty bad changes for marksmanship and windwalker, and some possibly positive changes for now to retribution and havoc, as well as I would say fury as well, fury warrior. We'll have to see how this continues. Likely tomorrow we are going to go over mythic plus to see if anything changed, particularly tanks. It is much easier to find out if tanks are getting considered more when you go and look at Mythic Plus, the rate of their invites, the rate of their keys being completed. This is, it's going to be interesting, particularly for blood and protection. Same for healers. We're going to see if anything changed there, as well as some of the DPSers. We know, for example, that Windwalker was getting very popular in Mythic Plus as well. Have they dropped as much as they did in raids? What about Marksmanship Hunter? That is what we're going to go over tomorrow. For now, we can stop here. I would also like to point out for everyone who is um, either overly happy about the changes or overly depressed about the changes that these changes are in the middle of the patch. Um, they are effectively worthless. Most of the, I would say, I don't know, important key progression by top guilds have been done already. So what is happening right now is mostly pointless as we are going to get more changes, more balanced changes in 9.1, which is what is going to matter. It is what is going to give the final push or the final nail in the coffin to some of the specs so you can enjoy for now if your spec has been buffed or you can despair for a bit if your spec has been nerfed but it's not going to be the be all and all for the next year so in short what i'm trying to say is don't put too much credit you know too much importance into these changes now with that being said we can leave ourselves we're gonna see each other tomorrow see you guys soon and in the meantime i believe there is a tornado coming towards my house what the Fuck is this wind?